question. So why is it hard? Why is it hard? How difficult is it for them to let us know what exactly is going on? How difficult is it for them to tell us, to give us a notice? How is it? So go up and tell us. No, absolutely. Speak up. Be our voice. And if you can't do that, believe all of us can. So we've been communicating with CFA. We've been encouraging just that. Uh, transparency. Uh, what, what have you been communicating? What have you been Because you yes. don't feel so for, pain. Okay, so for example, you do not feel we've been requesting, we've been, we've been um, requesting that they have more accurate maps. The current maps that they're providing do not give you a good sense of where That's the detections are. Thank you. Yeah. That, um, there's we need more to know where the positive yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. But that but way you can find a more accurate map. I mean, honestly, um, I don't think that's helping because they're killing. They're making mistakes and going to the wrong properties. So how is that helping? No, no. We need way more, more, more answers than that. I appreciate your help. I appreciate you being here, but you need to feel our pain, our frustration. No, it's 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 your words, it's your livelihood. All the time, it's your pets. I don't understand that, and I have to do that so I get mine out of the way. Without asking some questions. Yeah, um, I get to see what you do. Okay. I want my manager to be aware that yesterday I was assaulted by a CHP officer. I was assaulted by a CHP officer yesterday. I asked to speak to his supervisor, being denied that by the officers present at the scene. I had to call, call in myself a few times for a supervisor to come out. After that, CDFA served me with a violation of warranty because I wasn't actually in their yard, but I was at the property. I need to understand, because from what I understand, all of Riverside County is in quarantine. Am I not allowed at my neighbor's house? Am I not allowed in my own home? Am I going to get cited and they can cite me to me? It was retribution because they've never given anybody that form and I wasn't the only one there with that situation. It seemed to me like they were using retribution for me contacting a, a supervisor to come out because of the CHP issue. And I'm scared of retaliation. I don't know. They threatened me with arrest. Instead of looking into the matter, they were more looking into whether I, I violated the law. And threatening the arrest. And I'm scared. I don't know what to do. So I just I, one, I can't get four copies of for going to my neighbor's house. Okay, I can't get fined to go. Oh, what am I supposed to do like in my own home? home? Am I going to be fined for going in a room to go? What are we supposed to, what am I supposed to do about that? I'm scared that they can just find me. I think I'll have any questions at this time. I'm sure we'll have questions. Yeah, no, um, I, you know, I think our office feels like their, their husband's sort of like I know we've and the only you know, part in, they're getting in a lot of ways yeah, yeah. the press um, a lot of you because of sort of how this has progressed, the lack of information, you know, sometimes, you know, the lack of transparency and so forth, you know, as our office was here, you know, um, you know, I'd be happy to speak with you a little bit more and, you know, because why I'm here today is basically to hear stories like yours so that I can go back to my office and tell my district right here and all the mid lane pass it on to our chief of staff and the center. The center is aware of what's going on here. I want, I want to be aware. Our staff here and our staff in Sacramento has been communicating with CDFA and has expressed their concerns over how this process has been done and has been carried out here in our district and, you know, has been affecting, you know, constituents like yours. You know, I've heard stories like this of, you know, CHP not being the most helpful. I've heard stories of um, them going to the wrong house. I've heard stories of them not being on time to appointments, showing up at wrong times, or not being sensitive to um, children being around when they get you know, all these stories that, you know, as an office, you know, obviously it's, that's, you know, that's not stuff we like to do. We, we feel that the process could be better. Um, you know, so we're trying to work with CDFA to make sure, you know, they, they have their mandate, they have their concerns, and so our role is really to take your constituent, relay that to CDFA, and them, um, encourage them to, you know, take certain notes so I'm here today, not so much to tell CDFA what to do, that's not really our office's role. Um, our, our role is to, again, take your concerns, make sure that CDFA is hearing them, and to kind of give a little bit more punch behind it, you know, basically that they're hearing from the office, from the representative, that, you know, these are real concerns, these are real things happening. <laughs> I'm
I am a sweet mom. I'm a little, I work really hard, but then we're going to have a Q&A after. So we can go to my neighbor's house, if I go to my friend's house. What if I see this and do it? It seems to me, to me that it's not set up like a child project. A retribution for me. She was physically, she didn't mention earlier, they grabbed her arm, the officer did, and physically moved her over. We'll just call it that. And then at the end, he denied that he did. He, an hour later, he denied that he did that and then said he relocated her. And although, you know, I'm kind of taking mental notes and when I get a second, I'll, I'll take notes on my phone, is to really have this in writing. Um, so uh, please, uh, here's my card. Please send me an email um, with, you know, explaining what happened, provide as much detail as possible, and it helps us, you know, more documented the experiences of our consensus. Well, we had a, one of our, and she could not be here, but one of our, um, women was followed to her child's, well actually twice, one to elementary school, but didn't get a picture of it, uh, but the second time was followed into her uh, four-year-old's YMCA, the parking lot and the library. They got off the street, she parked, they got off the street, they got behind her truck, stopped, gawked her, and then she realized who they were. She took a picture, she got a picture of the truck and the license plate, and then they looped around. We called the police, it took an hour and a half. Once they heard, once officer heard it was CDFA, CDFA related, he, he, uh, I'll, I'll get back with you guys later. He showed up at 8.30. But he came off the road. There, I mean, our our little group is being harassed. That's okay. That's a, that's honestly that is my job. My job is to. But then you take the eight thousand person between you and, and then we fall. So, like I said, as much as you know, Why? I can you know turn Why around into my house. Hey, there's this person who's doing this. This person who's doing this. Out of my house. Out of my house. Out of my house. You can imagine it. You know, there is a lot more weight if I can have a stack of emails or a stack of letters saying these are all these people. So I don't know. We've had families that got the notice for the kill notice, and two days later, this has happened twice now, they get a dead box of chickens at their front gate before the kill. You have to remember, these people are welfare to work that they hired. When the disease goes away, they don't have a job. We have, we've seen a false report, and I have a copy of it. Uh, we've had two households that had a box of dead chickens two days after the notice at their front gate. So people are trying, you know, there are people trying to keep their job and keep this disease thing going on. So while you guys think we're going to, I mean, I can't make this stuff up. That's why we have the reporting on the phone. We can't make this up. No. Oh, she just showed up. This is bullshit. She can't answer the questions. She can't answer no questions. We need someone that can she answer questions to today, in, including the gun regulations and distance they could shoot, because they're shooting the back of residents' houses, and it's went into neighbors' yards, it shot a goat, and it broke a window, and it's injured other animals. We need to know the regulations for their shooting on a residence. So I, I, I know we're throwing questions at you, but all those people there will not answer anything we said. Say, yeah. Because to be honest, I have been kind of taking mental notes. <laughs> I'm just. I know, and I bet you can't run fast enough for all of this. But there's so much that goes on, and and I kind of feel the only end that they're doing is because there. I don't know how much they can pay per chicken for kale. But obviously, it's some good money, and so it's whatever they can do to get that kill that day at that time, so then get to the next one to get the next kill, and get as many in as possible. And
and they're not having any regard to anybody's feelings or and they or don't stay on the same health. street either they yeah. go like this street they'll go and the next call will be five blocks over the next call will be another direction so they're spreading it with their vehicles they're not staying in the location where right. well that's to try to lose, like the hot to lose zone. us but what i'm saying is they're so abusive and that they're using the power just so they can get, get as many kids as possible. And it's not because they're agreeing with, with it, it's because they're getting paid to kill them. That's all yeah. they're caring about. Why are you going to fix something if you're getting paid to do it? Why? <laughs> why are you, why are you getting... They, they would be without a job. I mean, no, it's, but it's, they're making good money right now, and if they can kill about, a thousand you know, they're chickens a day... Their That's temporary workers money. are going to be without a job when this disease goes away, yeah. hypothetically goes away. Well, yeah, but they have to hurry because they don't want the next squad to get there to get that chicken. They want to get as many as they can. It goes by head count. So that's, that's my it point. is based I think on it head goes count. by head count how many they can kill. That's what they get paid for each individual. Because why else would they tell us? Well, yeah, you can kill your own chickens, but you can't keep them. Why? Why? Why can we not kill our own chickens and yeah, put them in our freezer? Why do we have to? Once we kill them, why do we have to surrender them? Why? They're, so they can get paid for the kill, even though they didn't do it. There are people. There are people that have pets, but there are farmers here, and they will kill for the. They would kill their own animals for their own meat because meat is not bad, and that's what they are told not to. My chickens are for my granddaughter, my grandson. He's autistic. She's got PTSD, and these chickens were like the little sanctuary. Yeah, I mean there's and farmers and there's. Even though pets, we don't raise them for meat. I would rather put them in my freezer than throw them in the landfill. So I don't understand why we wouldn't be able to do that. Like my neighbor, he has beautiful peacocks. Good meat. Why would we let that just go to waste? Why couldn't we just put them out and use the meat? Is that does that not make more sense? I, I'm curious to it. I mean, again, I'm I'm no scientist, so I don't know. I'm curious to see if it's uh, biosecurity. Oh. But what's the security if they're just going to throw them in the landfill for right. the other Absolutely. animals to carry on? Absolutely. So definitely a fair question to ask. It. Definitely something that you know, I will. Yeah. Again, I'm taking I'm taking notes and um, we've been again asking some questions on the CDFA and I, I understand sometimes the answers they give us is different than the experience that is happening. But I mean, why? But why won't they explain that? Why is it they they just you know put the Highway patrol in our way, they won't answer anything. And I understand the people that's doing the killing is just hired by them. They're not professional in any way, shape, or form. And now it's not even biosecurity. They just get out there with whatever they're wearing. And we've got pictures of it. That they're not even suiting up anymore. They're not worried about the disease. Do they have like identification? They won't show it. No, uh, we have never been given a name. Homeowners, they go to their house and we've never been given a name. That's one of our complaints. You see, so that's, you know, that's just a few of the questions. Why, you know, why all this is happening? Why don't they right. give us, uh, like, they tell me they come to, oh, we're only testing. A few days later, they come to kill. Well, they said, no, if your birds are negative, then you will not get a phone call. Wait, three days. You don't get a phone call. Oh, my goodness. Well, you won't be able to have it. They're just not going anywhere. I know, it's not going anywhere. But they said. I didn't find it. I don't know who's in charge. They go, we don't know what they said. We're here. 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 From the same people, or are these two different organizations going around? Let me see your, let me see your card. Oh, yeah. And by the way, who did they tell you is in charge of this event for tonight? Who did they direct you to? This it, I, my understanding is it's USDA with CDFA, um, and then I, I know Council Member Chris Barajas had really urged it. Um, but I mean, they didn't give you an individual here that like the go-to person because I am concerned about the gun regulations and everything I mean, else. I, I know they have several representatives here. Um, they have a, I know they have a veterinarian here. 
I guess I'm not quite understanding your, your question. What were you hoping? So we have some real questions that really, really need to be answered. And we need to find out someone with gun regulations. How far can they shoot at a residential house? I mean, legit questions. And their bios, their, their hazmat, none of their equipment is identified for hazmat. Can we just, like, group up? I think we should have kind of had a meeting. Yeah, but because this is not yeah, anywhere. No. They're, they're going to say they killed her two hours. No, I mean, I'm unfamiliar with no. some of the concerns. Should we do that? Yeah. Should we gather everybody? We haven't touched base. Yeah. Uh, we need to take control of this. Because this is not going anywhere. Exactly. This is not going nowhere. This is CDF through this so they can say. Do you know what's going on? Oh, I know. Do you know how they're doing killing? I, I, I have, do you know how they're I've disposing? I've seen the videos. I've heard the stories. And what do you think about that? Oh, I think it's wrong. I, I think what they're doing is not following whatever state procedures they're supposed to. Oh, why can't to. we? They're, they're educating us. Our animals are going to get killed. What is there to educate? What's safe? What, what are we? Biosecurity for what? A dead chicken? Sorry, I, it's too late. This, 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 this is too late. She could not answer this question. She just walked away. Like what kind of questions? Every question that you you can think of, we asked. Why are you killing? Why are you killing without um, testing? Why are you doing it the way you're doing? Just barging in. Why didn't you give us a notice? Why are you not uh, bringing uh, bilingual people to people to non No. She's no And I'm going to go around asking that and many other questions myself as a resident. I'm going to be doing that in a few minutes too. So I'm going to see what. Uh, 
uh, I don't know the extent, but I think it's probably two hours. I think it's from six to eight. Where is your location where you live? Is it Indian Hill? Glen, Glen Avon. Glen Avon. Okay. I don't know. I live in the rural, okay. rural okay. spot. I wasn't sure if it was. Um, where horses are allowed. <laughs> Yeah, right? but this the is not warrant, about a horse. They're warrant. They're they're using like, the warrant. How are yeah. they using the warrant? Oh, it's a bully them. process. Bullying. Yeah. They're, they're saying they have a warrant. They got to come in. But then oh, they've cut locks. They cut locks, and if you have dogs, they have it. We have it on recording today. If you have a dog and they cut your lock and you're not home, they'll talk, call animal control and have your dog picked up so they can go through your yard. I have that from a sheriff recorded. Yeah. So if you're not home and a warrant is presented and you are not home, you're at work, and they cut your lock, and they will, and they have, but they will call for animal control and take your dog if your dog's barking the at them. Your name is not in the warrant. Oh, no. Yeah. So, somebody else told me it's, uh, it's a blanket a warrant. warrant or something. Yeah, I don't know anything legally about that kind of But who can we ask? Okay, even yourself. Who can we ask here? I'm going to go around asking them. By the time this is over, come and talk to me again and see what we have. I can't promise you they'll even give me information, but I think, I'm going to seek out but the same uh, how, how can we have a meeting, and you and you guys are part of the Hoopa Valley here, and no, we're not going to get answers. We don't know that, and that's why I said. I'm going to do my rounds like everybody else is, and several people are going to come back and tell me what they found out, if it, if it works, if it's answered their questions, if it's totally off base. We're going to have that at the meeting okay. at, at the end. Well, I'm yeah. No, I'm sticking around. You can just come up and talk. All right. All right. It's Let's go to these tables. Thing, come I'm on. Not, it's a science fair I'm for us. I'm not going to go anywhere go. until I'm the last one. It's going to be a place. science fair for us. We're part of the science. We're part of the science. Where their status, their science, their scientific data that they're going to use 15 years from now to clean up our backyard again. No, we don't have rights. We, we're nobody. As far as what we've been through, what we've we're through, nobody. That's one of the questions I was asking. We're nobody. Literally, they, pee, they make it feel this little. This little. Who are we? Where's our rights? They'll be the CDR. CDFA. And I'm sorry, and you're with? Who are you with? Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I'm just curious. Why don't they call them kill zones? Yeah, that's not really under quarantine anymore, right? If, if, if yeah. the intent is to kill every animal that's within whatever the, the boundary is, and come out and say it, but, and tell but, us what when it's going to happen, and prepare people. That's not happening. But you're not even giving people a time, a choice, and, and why are they testing birds and then not providing results? Let me give you an example. Let me give an example. My father had a kill date. We had a support team. My, my father's uh, birds are healthy. Beautiful peacocks. Beautiful chickens. Healthy. We, I, I called the support group. See the camp. They came in and they were intimidated by the people that we had. We were not intimidated. What they were doing? They cut our phones. Our yes. phone lines all went down. They, they had they a scammer and scan thing, and yeah. it shut our phones That's down. We had to reboot up. Yes. Really? Yes. I can't make this up. There was five phones you know went down simultaneously. Let me, let me just time. put it this way. We had. <laughs> We had, about, we had about 30 speaker cards at Thursday's meeting. Some donated time to some other yeah. people, right? So maybe yes. we had 22 yeah. to 24 speakers or something yes. in that range. I thumbed through the cards. I saw the different last names, the different addresses. If it was a situation where a, a, a resident on one street, a cul-de-sac, were upset, really upset, and they, they wanted to make a stand, that's one thing. But the addresses, the names, all from all over the place in our city. Well, oh, that, the comments and the stories were all different and unique, but all the same. Well, let, let her finish because her family... My father, thank, I thank God that I was there because my father does not speak English. So I was there to, for the support and to interview with whatever it happened. Translation. The translation, anything and everything. So... The, the lady who came up did not have a Spanish speaking person. And I said, hold up, you talk to my father in his language. 
she didn't know what to say. She, went, my father was, uh, he would, he consented to the kill because he didn't want any problems. None of us do. But the way that you guys are doing, not you, sorry, they're doing it. It's, it's very wrong and it's hurtful and it's painful. So she gave my father the consent form to sign up. He, they didn't need let, let him read it. And I'm like, wait a minute. Let me read it. Let me at least translate. And I requested a Spanish one. They refused completely. How, and, and this is how I was there to speak up for my father, but what about the other people who maybe Spanish <laughs> have like no word in this? Why? Not because they're stupid, but because I cannot communicate. They're getting bullied, they're getting intimidated, they're, ask, they're even asking if they're legal. They cannot do that. So because, because, because of the people, because the support team was there, they decided to not even ask us nothing. They just walked away. They're going to reschedule. Till this day, we have not received a phone call rescheduling. So my fear is they're going to come in and why? My father is an older man. I, I, I'm the one who takes care of him, who speaks up. He's 75 years old. What happened yesterday to a 90 year old lady? Yeah. That is just Normal sick. That's elderly abuse. Please. Her caregiver couldn't come in the yard. We are not chicken crazy. These are our pets. Just like if you have a dog and you love to them, I have turkeys. I have beautiful geese. I have beautiful chickens. And it just hurts and it breaks my heart. How I've been witnessing how they stomp them, how they do gas. I'm sure you oh, see yeah. it. How they dispose of them, and it's supposed to be biosecurity. No. He's good, better looking. Please, please help us. There you go. Please. You're in. She's better looking. I'm, I'm like begging you, please help us. We understand if there really was a disease out there, believe us, we're, I think all of us are responsible enough to like, do something about it because they're in our home, they're in our, with our kids. Why are they not testing? They tested mine in the beginning. Why is there no name? Mine came out. They break in our yard with no yeah. name. I mean, no IDs turning backwards. Yeah. I mean, why are they wearing a badge if they're not going to present their As name? As I said, everything points to the rules and what they're doing are not jiving with what they should do. They don't wear uniforms. Nothing. No badges. Their so, items are not, uh, uh, they're, they're using Ziploc bags from the UK, oh, like the 99 cent store. Nothing is being um, you, labeled, nothing. No, there are biohazard, our biohazard, our hazmat, it just blown out the door. We had chickens that were starting to smell that were in the back of the truck. They showed up in the morning and they had chickens from another kill, so apparently it was the night before. And they were at, our, at one of the houses for five hours. They started to stink. Yes. Stink, there was this, and they were in the driveway there was of this, this man's house. They drove someone else's dead birds onto the driveway of this man's house, yeah. and they started to stink. There was this one occasion where they, they they accidentally left a chicken on the ground, on the road, and they like, you forgot one. Oh, the cats will get it. Are you kidding uh, really? <laughs> Yes. Yes. Right? right? We, we can't make this we stuff up. Well, that's, that's my point. There's too many residents that have too many different but stories but to have been the BS. But you're a, you're it's just, it's just you're a mayor. The only thing that I'm... You're our mayor. Can you find out who's in charge of this here? We need, with you standing next to him, so you know what we're being told. Yeah. We need to talk to whoever's in charge of this. Whoever scheduled this meeting, yes. we need that meeting. Everybody else that wants to see the paperwork, fine. Our, our chickens are dying. What is, what is, what is that? <laughs> Four months ago. All right. What? Really? I'm sorry. You're a day late and a dollar short. Do us a favor. Come please walk with us and please at, listen to our questions and listen to the answers. Can you do that? Are you ready for this? Let's go. I'm more than happy. Thank you. Okay. Let's go. The lady who also called um, animal control while being in her backyard. Yeah. Oh, they called yeah. animal control. On her horse. On her horse because it had a sleigh back.
okay. and thought it was underway. Yes. But it was 32 years old. The horse is 32 years old. So it's their job to call animal control and bring them they're into the backyard. They're, they're, they're compounding the problem with the exactly. team. They're trying to keep the owner over that way while they do what they want over that way. Should we go with him? I've seen him. Oh, is yeah. that a good one? Let's, let's go, girl. Let's go, girl. Come on, girl. I'm very busy. Don't ask me nothing right now, okay? Mama's on a roll. You want to start with the question and then I'll follow? Oh, I'll start with Okay, but who are I mean, you? you no. Who are you? Who are you? No, no, no. Who are you? What is your name? Let me introduce you to our mayor. Yeah, our mayor. No. Mayor, can well, you ask for this man who's standing in this building? Apparently, you're even your last name. You I'm a little surprised. What I'm here for is to answer questions I about you. And, and I, I work with USDA, and I'd be proud to do that for you. But that's what I'm here for. But you are? Do you have a card? I don't. Okay. Okay. Do we need to go any further with any questions? Let's go to the sure next one. Let's go with the next one. Let's go with the next one. You understand who's running the show here? I don't think where? Who else? I don't think uh, anybody's running the show. Who called for this meeting? I'm, I'm Brian Burks, the mayor for Hoover Valley. Hi, Brian. Um, the mayor for Hoover Valley. Oh, okay. I was just talking to a couple of your council members. Yes, we've got. I think everybody's here. Uh, really interested to get some answers. Um, I know there's, there's a big ton of questions that residents have brought forward to the council sure. about the procedures that are being followed, or in my in my opinion, the lack of procedures that are being followed. Can you give me some insight as to what the proper procedure that you're supposed to follow is, and 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 how come that's not being followed now? Oh, wait, sure. one moment before we do that. Can you inter can you introduce yourself, by the yeah, way, to us? I'm Kent from CDFA. Kent Your, what was it? What was Kent. it? Kent. Kent, Kent who? Kent is sufficient. No. Kent CDFA. I'm CDFA. Another one. See, this is it, it's this an what ongoing the thing, apparently. No, no last name. Why, yeah. why are you, what are you hiding? You guys are hiding everything. Uh, you're not going me, out on I'm the kills, so why is I your name in Hooper Valley? Okay. I w we're here to you ask questions. Why? 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 Are you expect why? 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 Okay, what? If, if, if open you open up their house. Chance, I'll answer to someone okay. Let me, let me, let me, here goes my first question. Here goes my first question. Who are you? I'm Kent, and I work for CDFA. My name is Monica Cervantes. No. Hi, Monica. Okay, and you are Kent. Kent. Kent from Barbie. No, Kent, Kent, Kent with a T. I'm, okay. I'm happy to go ahead and answer your okay. questions if she would no. allow me to do that. Oh, no, no, no. He's oh, no, here actually, for... actually, uh, go, I, ahead. go ahead. I'm, I'm troubled. Let him, let him do it. It's man to man. Let you can't introduce yourself to me, then I'm not sure why I'm talking to you. I'm not even sure who you are, to be honest. Okay. Well, I would like to the, know who you are. Part of the problem, obviously, is some of the threats that have gone up on social media. And so, so you're fearful of your not, not safety. We're not willing to get our family, our children involved. In oh this my thing. God! But it's okay for oh us. Oh my God! You followed a girl. What you followed a woman on a preschool. Hello, hello, everybody. Oh my God! Hey, 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 listen up, please. Well, we need your attention right here. We need your attention. I'm sorry. They are sorry. sorry. Please, I have no problem in introducing repeat. myself. No. I have no problem in introducing myself. My name is Monica Cervantes, and I live here in Miraloma. This okay. is not going everywhere, and I'm sorry, I'm very upset, because I'm close to the kill date, and my birds, like everybody else's, are very healthy. 
-hmm. One question. I think he's in charge. May I ask who you are, please? Well, first of all, I'm not in charge. Second of all, my name is Kent, and I'm with California Kent Department of what? Food, and, food and Ag. Kent what? And we're here tonight to help you answer your questions, <laughs> well, whether wait, it's at any of the four tables. We have she, set up wait, 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 like people, don't turn around, don't turn around, don't turn around. No, no, he is this afraid is of us. Wait, we're wait, here wait, to, we're wait. here to ask questions. Can you You're please, not answering. Can you please repeat what you said earlier that CDFA is afraid of us? Wait, listen, listen. You have to listen. To listen. This. Please listen. listen. You guys have to please listen. listen. Please listen. Kids. What, what is the procedure that you're supposed to What is he to afraid of? Because I've gotten so many reports from people about, uh, let's call it bullying, by the people coming up to the site, to the, to the okay. homes, uh, coming in odd hours, uh, storming like the militia. Uh, not really providing people that don't speak English and any documentation or translation okay. in that language if you didn't know. Our city is about 70 or more percent Hispanic population, so most of the people here, you know, especially the elderly people, are, and that's kind of where the houses have been targeted. They don't speak English, or they have trouble speaking English, or they can't read English documents, and how come they're not being provided something in Spanish or a translator to, to get them through the process? And, and how come, what, one more, uh, the, 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 the whole scheduling issue. So I get a lot of complaints. We've had a lot of, you know, we take the heat too. It's not just you guys uh, about about this process. And you know, why is it that the, uh, they're they're just showing up randomly? They they make appointments um, and they don't show up, and then they come when they feel like it. Uh, I don't know how your scheduling works, but you know, there are our residents are willing to cooperate if they know what the heck's going on. And I don't think, based on all the comments I'm receiving. I don't think that's happening. I think there's a problem with the CDFA's rollout of this program. And they're not, I, I believe there's the state rules. I'm sure CDFA has a whole list of things. This is how you do it. This is the, pro the procedure. Like everybody has a procedure. But I'm hearing and seeing video footage. Everything I see is the opposite of what I think a, a legitimate procedure should be, but I don't have the list of your procedures, so I'm hoping you can shed some light on exactly what the process is and lead sure. you through it. Yep, happy to. Okay. So when we have identified a premises with poultry, we will go ahead and issue a quarantine. On that quarantine, at the bottom of it, is an email address, and it specifically states if you have an issue with this quarantine, you can email in to that address that's there within 24 hours of the issuance of the quarantine, and we will be happy to go ahead and schedule an informal hearing. So there's a hearing officer. And yeah, what does that exactly entail? Well, that's hearing officer? the appeal. That's, we've never won an appeal case. We've always uh, had I just want to hear the but process. That's what it is, yeah. let, let, let him have yeah. his chance to tell us what, what exactly their process is. Thank you. We didn't understand that. This is the way they serve you, the, the search warrant, like that. Can I so we'll go ahead and issue the quarantine. If they ask for an informal hearing, we'll go ahead and set that up. We will have that hearing within 48 hours of when it's, Where is the hearing when it's, it's telephonic. Okay. So we have a hearing officer generally up in Sacramento that handles that end of it. We generally have uh, someone, one of the incident commanders, from the incident that's on there, and we also have one of the epidemiologists, veterinarians, that is also on that uh, call. They start by giving background on the incident, exactly why we're there, what we're doing, why we're doing it, a little background on the disease. You forgot the, to mention how you're doing it. The epidemiologist then goes ahead and gives information on the specific neighborhood where that individual is. And then the individual uh, has the opportunity to go ahead and give their side of the story. Um, the hearing officer that will then make a decision on that within 24 hours and issue that most often via email. It can be by postal or whatever the appellant asked for it to be. Um, as far as the euthanasia goes, if that appeal is denied, there is a date written on the bottom of that quarantine as to when those birds 
would be euthanized by. It's a range, usually a week out or so. And then we would proceed accordingly. Okay, so let me ask a little deeper in this whole appeal process. What, what would be a reason that an appeal would be either approved or rejected? What, what, what qualifies? For that. Yeah, one of, one of the things, and the reason we have an epidemiologist veterinarian on the call, is they are looking at what we have defined as a highly infected area within a local area. That's an area where we have seen um, a number of cases where we know there's positive virus, and based on that and other aspects of the case, um, they will give their recommendation as to whether or not those birds should go ahead and be euthanized. The reason for that, and in some cases there are birds that have been euthanized that are not currently infected, is because that's a population, we're looking at this area as one huge flock with, with likely exposure and even without the likely exposure, we are looking at a situation where if we remove the host of this virus, which is mainly chickens, it can be other poultry species as well. If we can reduce the host of that virus, then this virus will die out, especially in the summer heat. But we, it, it, it won't die out if, if the host of this virus continues to harbor that virus. Okay, so if a resident wants to keep their birds, what, what would be a process that they could go through or get testing done in advance? Or what, what can a resident do to provide to your office whatever information you would want to see that the birds are free and clear of disease and would potentially be continually required to be tested in the future to verify that they, I'm sorry, that they don't, that they don't, you know, get that disease in the, in the near future. What, yeah. what, what is the process for somebody to do that? If, if, if they are in one of these highly infected areas where we know that there's a lot of virus circulating already, even if those birds are tested, we will go ahead and euthanize those birds, again, in order to reduce the host of this virus. That's the only way we're at a point in this thing. And let me backtrack just a little bit. When we started this incident in May of last year, 2018, our first strategy is we would go in, when we identified a positive flock, we would go ahead and euthanize those birds, and we would test the surrounding birds around that positive flock. Any positive birds were euthanized, any negative birds would stay under quarantine, couldn't be moved. What happened is that strategy backfired on us, and that's happened in other disease incidents as well, because some of those birds that tested negative a week later, a month later, three months later, came up positive. And the reason being either illegal movement of birds or people moving the virus or simply so much virus in the environment that these birds came up infected. So because of that, we've had to go with this more aggressive approach. And we have taken out birds, we have euthanized birds that are within these highly infected areas. You, said, you mentioned something about summertime killing off the virus. Well, it's getting pretty hot all of a sudden. So yeah. what, what, what? There were some days what, last year it got up to 122 degrees, but what, what, even what that is degree that? of heat won't kill the virus off if it's in the host. So, Documentation if, if, if I'm getting this right, and I don't want to, I don't want to misspeak, but it sounds to me like if, if somebody's got birds in the in the hot zone, they are going to be killed. Period. That's correct. And there's nothing that can be done to stop it. There's, there's one exception to that, I know. and one of the things our epidemiologists do is we are constantly reevaluating whether you call it a hot zone, a highly infected zone, whatever. That's not a change that's made on a daily basis, but it's a change that may be made periodically. Where those lines are redrawn uh, for that highly infected area, and if that happens, then it could enlarge, it could shrink down. So, and what have you seen in the last change. three or four months? What, what, you know, we're, we're where, making, where are we in this city? 
we're making, well, I can't speak specifically in Garupa Valley City, but I can speak as far as the regional quarantine involving L.A. County and the western portions of Riverside and San Bernardino County. We're making progress. In the last month, we've had four new positive confirmed premises. That's it. In Garupa or just in the whole? No, in the whole, in those three counties. That is tremendously different than what we were seeing. But what was the high point? The number of uh, infected birds at the highest point. We have, we've identified in the whole incident from May up until yesterday, 450. That's May of this year? May 2018. Okay. So in a year, year of 2018. About 12 and a half months. Or right. So. Okay. right. We've identified 450 confirmed positive premises. Okay. And are you aware of the boxes that are being dropped off at residents' houses? I was bringing up to the mayor, are you aware that residents that get a, a notification, we've had two households in Mariloma, that they get a box presented in front of their house two days later of dead chickens? I must be misunderstanding you. A box with a dead box, chickens? Yes, two days after they receive their paperwork. He knows this also. I mean, is there a way that we can sit you down and we can uh, all take a turn we've and ask had, We've had yeah, people I'm, get I'm a notification for a kill date around. and they get gifted a dead box of chickens after they've been notified of their kill date. Yeah. That's how it's getting spread. It. We also had pickup trucks that have prior after prior kills drive up into the driveway of a second house resident kill. After we euthanize the birds, those birds are bagged and they're taken to a local landfill. Uh, it's not a biohazard bag. It's a regular bag. You would buy no. a state of residence. Right. Video, I can show you a video. Dead bird, of a dead virus. That's a fact. No, it's not. Uh, when they go to the landfill, they're put in the landfill and then covered with no. two to four feet of material. Oh, no, I have the video. Can we um, go into the landfill? I have a video of the house that had the chicken for five hours that had bags in it. Can you, uh, Mayor, if they have nothing else to say, this is your room. You can escort them out. And you know what? We will applaud them. Uh, I, I want to give them the opportunity to share. What if they're they not going to provide a name and, and not at the end. end. Then you can escort them out. My, like my, my situation is very well and documented. And we standing applause. But I have a lot of questions on behalf of other people. I have a lot of legality issues and what happened yesterday, for instance, with this young lady. Whether, so, whether, whether he wants to sit or stand is not the issue. Well, I mean, just keep it loud because I can't hear everybody's yelling one of their questions. So it's not, it's, I don't think it's it's giving us the answers. We're, we're not getting answered. They're, they did this on purpose. They scrambled us like they do the homeowner. It's okay. It's like a scramble technique. So they can say they came. They, I'm sorry, they played you. And if not, no, you have great questions. You did good. That's why we like you. One and a quarter million birds murdered, but only 400 testing positive. Do those numbers add up to you? Is that, is that the number of total euthanasia? It's like closer to two thousand, two million. It's probably closer to two million. Yes, I'm sure. But the numbers no, that was in April. One and a quarter number. million birds have been killed. 400 have tested positive. Do we have any statistics of how many residences in our city have had uh, euthanized birds? Yeah, we probably do. I don't Positive know the statistics. With probably. It. You think it's in the dozens or hundreds or one and a quarter million birds have been euthanized? That includes ten commercial premises. So some of those, have, some of those have had anywhere from forty to probably one hundred seventy thousand birds. So, the, the next thing, okay, so you, you go in and you euthanize the birds. Then, what's a resident to do if they want another bird, another chicken? What, what's the? Right. How long do they need to wait? What's the process? How does? I mean, you certainly don't want you coming back a month later to kill right. their, their brand new birds. Right. So, what is? How, how can you lead there's us a, through that? There's a 120 day fallow period. So once we have euthanized birds off a of, off of premises, they can't repopulate for 120 days. But after that time, and, then they're and able it to? It could be longer than that, depending on the regional quarantine. 
the quarantine that encompasses all three of those counties, or one full county in the western portion. So basically, once you guys have stopped filling in the quarantine area, then the 120 day starts? No, the 120 day starts on the day we euthanize words on a particular premises. Okay, so then I wait. But it could extend longer than that. So if, so if, if my birds are still killed. finding infection in that area. So if my birds are killed and I wait the 120 days, I know I need a clearance from you guys, from what I've heard. I get that clearance, I get If we're not going to do like a more of a debate thing, I'm actually going to go and take off, but I'll be in contact with you later. Because all I'm hearing is screaming, I got somebody about No, he wants to take, shake that. your head, I'm just going to shake your head. And, 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 and I'm not getting, I'm not You were leaving me, Hannah. Well, no, I'm not getting help and answers, and to be honest with you, I have four kids and I don't have any more time to waste. I would like to sit down and have this gentleman sit so we can all, with quietness, ask him the questions that we seek answers to. No, I'm fine. Go ahead. We're good to here. Are you good? Okay. Well, wow. Nobody can hear. We want to hear you. It, it's cluttering. Okay. Well, great job. I was okay. Asking I'll start these questions. Questions. Thank you very like much. Like I said, I'm a resident back. too. And I'm a bird lover. So. You know what? I've never been into politics, but I sure back you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Sandy, can you want to kill everybody? Try to do it. Well, they had to. They all died. And it showed. It showed the empathy. Thank you. So I did that. And you and I spoke. And you told me, okay, lock everything down. We're good. Okay, no problem. And I started going after people in America. I made a rule just advising people they have rights. And people are aware of that because they're not telling. So, you and I spoke that whole week prior to my birds being slaughtered. I dealt with Annette Jones, I dealt with you, I dealt with Susan, I got all the emails. I mean, how many times did I email? Did you say about a thousand? Five hundred? And all, okay, a lot. But nonetheless, I tried to call you that day. You didn't answer my call. Jill said that nothing will actually be taken. I had more of a rape in my home on a good Friday. And there are a lot of my pets in the main thing. And my birds, I can say you'll have them tested days after work. With your lab, you see Jesus. Those birds will be free of Newcastle, and I even want to step further. No detection of any disease. It's very free to see free. Your people, remember what I told you about Jay Contreras coming to my home and whatnot? Those visits, nothing happened. I have not one written conclusive test result of any disease. Why is that? I don't know if you heard my conversation. I did, and it's too loud. That's what I'm trying to find out. So there are some birds that we are euthanizing that may be exposed, but they may also be testing negative. They may not be infected yet because they're in a highly infected zone where we feel there's a lot of virus and where we're moving the host of this virus in order to get this thing eradicated. Yeah, there's virus. The reports and the scientific data that you are using to, to somehow come up with this, because I have not one scientific fact of anything. As a matter of fact, on my warrant, you guys put in the and you're in the so I don't even know if I'm going to influenza. Influenza on the warrant. We're not testing for influenza. Well, you better. You put it on the warrant. I mean, why, why was that on my warrant? I did with my children. Do you understand what you have done to my family? Over birds that are healthy, and even if they did get sick, like I told you before, I'm gonna roll with nature. If they get sick, I'll phone you. I've done nothing but abide by your own. Oh, on their own. Why is it 
I'm going to support her when somebody is going to suffer a loss of their pets and they ask me to come or her or her or whoever, why are you and, and CHP kiss this off to you? So answer me. When that person reaches out and wants somebody to support them, and that may mean just standing there wiping their tears away, why are you not allowing that? We understand fully the devastation that this has when somebody loses their birds that are a part of their family. Why are you allowing that? We didn't become veterinarians to kill chickens, to kill so, other uh, so livestock. So what I'm asking of you then, so the next warrant, the next raid that goes down, when this person asks me to come be there, I, then I can safely assume and say Ken Fowler is okay if this resident chooses to have somebody next to them for moral support and just to wipe their tears away. No, no. Next to them is what I want. And that happened yesterday with the 90. No, no, no. It, I want the lady yesterday wanted me with her. And they took what, her in uh, the house. So people that might go along to give moral support, as you mentioned, what sort of biosecurity? Uh, I've asked your people for gear. Give me gear. I'll wear whatever you want. Give me some gear. Or, or you could supply your own if you I feel could, strongly I... about preventing disease from spreading. Okay, so you're t okay. So if I provide, wait, wait, wait. So, I provide so here. that's a good reason. Okay. We would suggest so, if someone outside the premises doesn't go on. It's just from the biosecurity. Okay. No, that, that, then let's lock this down because I need an answer because I got people that are calling me. So I go get biosecurity equipment and I am allowed to, or maybe her, or maybe her. We are allowed to stay with that resident next to them and be their shoulder to cry on. But understand, we still need to have the opportunity yes, to sure talk to to talk to that bird owner. Well, you do, and, and you know what? But I want to if, be present if, because if you've got a dialogue ongoing where we can't do our job. That creates no, a no, problem. No, no, no. How about this? How about yes, we read yes, this? Yes, yes. You guys get five minutes. I get five minutes. I don't even speak Spanish, but she does, and those people didn't even understand the forms. So it's imperative that that person has somebody that can explain this stuff. Well, I, I totally understand the emotional part of this thing. You don't even understand. We need to ask the questions. Ask the questions. CHP told me to ask you, so I'm asking you. If I have biosecurity equipment, or one of us do, and the resident asks for somebody, is that possible? My question again is this. Somebody reaches out and they want support, whether that be a Spanish speaker, me, her, her, whoever. We will be allowed, without, it, without impunity at all, to stand next to this person. And if it means they sit there and cry and just want to cry, I'm able to stand there, document, I'm not armed, nobody's going to be armed, and I will wear whatever biosecurity suit you need me to wear. I guess I have to buy it if you'll give it to me. That way I know I got the right one. I appreciate that. And that cannot happen because I got three people this week that are about ready to lose it because they are in fear. I'll tell you what I think the best way to handle this is. Go ahead and put your request in writing to us. <laughs> Go ahead and get that to Tanya at the incident. Why can't and, we and, say right and, and we'll respond now. in writing once we've had a chance to talk to you that. But, but, I know. Do you know how many times I email you and nobody emails me back ever? You don't come here and say you don't I don't know why that would be. I email you. Why don't you email me back? How many emails do Kim Davis me? I have no idea. Okay. Well, well you don't. No, okay, nobody emails me back. You guys ignore me. But what I was told yesterday from this 90 year old woman is that CDFA, which is Paul, uh, they said, don't talk to that lady. We're not going to let you talk to her. They segregated her in the house. And I am sorry, but under the TIPS uh, crisis, when someone's in duress, it's actually recommended that they have somebody there for moral support. CHP has dumped this I, off on you, I, so I, I need to know. Let me there. ask you a question. I'm sorry. Let me ask you a question. ¿Cuándo van a parar ustedes el ser toda la matazón aquí que está en Curupa Valley? Excuse me. Answer my question. Answer my question. ¿Cuándo van a parar? Answer my question. Okay, uh, let me explain to you what she just said. Okay, 
Okay, y'all, this is exactly the things that are going on. You guys are going to our houses and bullying us, bullying people who don't speak the fucking language. Excuse me for a moment. And I know you said that several times. And I think that we have actually already spent a lot of time here. And I think we can speak has actually other people to chat with. You've been doing fine up on the my father. Do you want me to continue to Spanish? I give you one, but I don't understand. Exactly, that's my point. That's exactly my point. Okay, so, so for this lady here, her father, the guy's trying to give him forms in English, trying to make him sign. And I'm so sad, can I get the other forms? In Spanish. And you can't get it until you sign that, which is kind of an act of belief. We have that on video. So what we need to have happen is, yeah. like I said, this goes back to having a understands that language, I have a gentleman that speaks Farsi. He wanted somebody to help him, and that didn't happen. So now my control has said, I need to talk to you guys to make sure that basically these people can have support. And that is what I'm asking you. It's a very simple yes or no. I don't even know what training or experience you have to get. But, but again, let's stick to the very first question. I, I, this is the key, what I want to know tonight. I've got four people who have messaged me to please come be at their house so you guys can slaughter their healthy pets. Okay? They're going to comply with you because they're afraid, and that's okay. But what I want to know is I can be We are translators at every table. What I'm saying is, put that in writing to us and we will. We have several here. Would you like to see the last one? Like at the house. There's one in every room. Right around the corner. There should have been one in every room. And that's not a stop line. That's what I'm pointing to. Now, the fire line. They don't know what to do. There might be a phone call, but it's not a stop line. I've asked about all sorts of things. Okay, so what I'm saying is, I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house. I'm going to ask you to come to the house
I am sorry, but I don't trust that, and I have every legal right as the homeowner to know who is on my private property. So if there's a federal code you say, I want to know what it is because I know a lot of federal codes. I, I gave you mine. I'm sorry, but the whole humane euthanasia is The only ones where we are on, we need to show um, are these two. We're trying to respond, but then you're talking over us, which makes it over very you. difficult. Uh, okay. And at this Here's point, I think that we're done because we can't get anything done. Okay. We're talking because you're talking over us. So when you're asking okay. the questions, it's really not okay. productive. Either. 30 people were at my house. You should have had an incident log. I want the copy of the incident log of everybody that was in my yard. So I'm no. sure if you put in a request, add that email. I for know, that you even email me back. So, Ken has asked you to put that information. Okay, in Ken, email. you know what I'm going to do tonight, Ken? I'm going to email you a lot of questions. Use the email that's at the bottom of the card. How does that go to you? Because you guys switched that. Okay, well, I'll, maybe I'll just bulk it for everybody. But I want that into the log of who was at my home, and I'm going to guess that everybody else that has had people at their home, they're entitled to that incident log, too. Your car got broken into, and your people, I've got the videotapes, your people looking in yards and going in there. I don't know what process, but on my videotape, they told me they're hired, and they get two days of training. What is your vetting procedure? Do you run a criminal history? Do you run a live scan? Do you do a background? What do you do? We have folks that come down from uh, the administration in Sacramento when we have a hiring and they go ahead and do interviews and go through a standard vetting process. Do we know what that is? Can I get a copy of that? Put it in writing. Okay. We'll be happy. I saw a flyer Can I apply? the local welfare office. You guys yeah, welfare department. You guys will give me, uh, Would you hire me? Anybody can apply. I've been helping you a lot. I really have. And I'm going to, and here's the deal. I know you know who I am, and I know that this is something you don't want to maybe touch. Because let's face it, what you do to my family on Good Friday with, with our pet bird and my son and after I talked to you and you guys told me nothing would happen. Do you understand what you have done to a family? And I have been a police officer. My husband is a serious I can't even find out why my birds had to die. Why did they have to die? They were healthy. What did I do and what did my family do to you that deserved this? I think I did explain. You did explain to me. I don't have a positive in my area. My birds tested healthy. My little boy went out the backyard to run and off the fence to save his bird. You people came back there and you said you were making firearms and you scared him. Do you know my son is now in counseling? Do you know my son is made fun of at school? Do you know my daughters are gone with my mother because she can't be at my house because it's a slaughterhouse? And I've been nothing to you people. I've listened to you. I've been in contact with you for months. And what did I ever do that led you to believe that I was going to invade something or do something wrong or do anything shady? And the answer is nothing. What you did to me was completely targeted. The reason you did it, and I know that you're never going to admit it, is because you started harassing other people, and I took a stand for them. Because you guys are taking away people's constitutional rights, and I'm not okay with that. I'm not. So I don't. At this point, I'll email you. I email you every night. I probably send out about 500 a night. Nobody responds to me. What are you hiding? What is it? Is there a disease? Why do you know? Yeah. 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 I'm not the answer. I'm the email. Uh, I'm trying to get answers. I've came to your meetings. I've attended your meetings. I've done everything you asked up until that day. I called you that day. Why didn't you answer your phone? It's on my call log. Why? Why didn't you pick up the phone? Every other time I called you, you picked it up. Because and then Joe, you. and then Joe's in, and I know you worked with her that whole week about all your idiots coming to my house. I take every one of them. It's on the warrant. You guys set it up. Here I am listening to you. And you know what I'm going to tell people? Never, never again. If I knew it and know what lied people you are and how, what kind of integrity and what was going to happen to my family, those birds would have been gone. And I don't care about you guys. Buy me whatever you want. I'll pay it. But I can't live how it anymore with peace. There is none. How do I tell my kid? Did you see him on the news? I asked Steve Lyle to apologize. I can't even give an apology to the opportunity to answer at least some of your questions. You may proceed, sir. You may proceed to answer your questions, please. <laughs>
once again, we absolutely know the emotional arrest that this causes. Do you? Because no. it was done right. Sir, you lied to me. I was lied to. I called to get the conflict of interest. You did not And I have tried. Wait. Did I not speak to you back in December? We will all let you answer. Okay, how many times? A lot. So what did I do to you to deserve this? My parents were healthy. They were our kids. Those were our families. And you guys took away something on a good Friday on a family that has done nothing wrong, ever. I should have never listened to you, ever. And that's why I tell people, get your birds and get them the hell out because you guys can't be trusted. Look what you did to me. Look at my kids. Who oh, asked the paper that gives you the legal right to do that? Well, they've done it on Easter, Mother's Day, they've killed on every holiday. Good Friday. Well, where's the legal paper saying they can do it? What about with Annette Jones and the conflict of interest? They say that Annette Jones with the conflict of interest, she's in Central California. Her chickens, everybody else, all your chickens have to be in pans and locked down. Her chickens are free roam. No, 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 no. No, I'm asking you a question. A free roam. We're not commenting on that. Free roam. Free roam chickens. Free roam. Your chickens are free roam. Use the email address at the bottom. Use that email address just in case you don't have it. Thank you. What's the email address? Children in your answers. Thank okay, you. What's email address? Another one for you because she's typing. This is Jennifer. I want oh, you to tell him. I told what him about went the, by your the house. truck with the dead birds. Oh. God, oh, God, yes. Tell him what happened with you being followed. We'll tell him what that happened was, yesterday. That was in your neighborhood. Yeah, in, a, in our neighborhood. We went to actually help one of our neighbors that's just down the road from us. And when we showed up there, and we have it on our little website, Facebook website, it shows that um, there is a pickup truck loaded with already killed dead birds. They drove up and they parked in this man's driveway. We had been there for a, li a little while before he dawned on us. I'm like, wait, his animals haven't been killed yet. And there's bags of chickens, dead chickens, in the back of the truck. Not the proper quarantine No, but the thing is, they're supposed to take it to the dump. And this gentleman over here just said they're supposed to take it to the dump. After every they kill, have, they, have they were stinking. But they're bringing it to they the were, house. They brought it to the house, wow. and they were stinking. The chickens were stinking. Here's the important They were stinking. So and then, I my my neighbor has it because us that go and you know try to help, even herself, everyone that goes to try to help, we're getting followed. And it's on the ring cam. Yeah, it's on the ring cam. My neighbor has it on the ring cam. I'll show you this when I'm done recording here. I'll show you this at the end of this. I had no problem with that. That, and then we have one of my neighbors that was also heavily involved, but she actually stepped away from it. Heavily involved. She went to go pick her four-year-old up. You know where the library is on Felspar? Yes. There's a YMCA. She went to go pick her four-year-old. They got off the road, drove up behind her truck because she was parked. Drove up behind her truck, stopped, got her. She got out. She realized what, it, who it was, not who it was, but she realized it was one of them. And took a picture of the truck and did a police report. The police officer took an hour and a half to show up. And once he heard the word CDFA, he left and said he had another call. And then showed up at her house at 8:30 that night to do a report. They go. They are not. When they're off duty, they're following us. I will show you the video after this. I will. I can prove everything I say. I can prove everything I say. I just want to let you know. Another thing is because I go and I translate for the Spanish speakers. Because another thing is they're they they're not they're asking for the information in these contracts that they're signing to be in Spanish, and they're not providing them with that. They're not providing them with the. They, of course, they want them to sign it in English, even though they don't understand. Me, I go and I help translate, and I help and I help for them to know what's going on because a lot of times, because the Hispanic community attends, are not educated in our world. Yes. I go there, but now with this quarantine thing, I mean, I could be arrested for going to translate to help for them. 
Okay, and Councilman, I gotta, I gotta bring it up to you. You read documents every day. Now, when you read something that's like a, a newspaper, you can read through it pretty fast, right? Like a newspaper. But a legal document, a contract, it has, a, you know, the ten dollar words in there, big stuff like that. You have to, okay. Understand again, we're talking about someone that either does not understand the language at all, or we even have English speakers, it's not just Spanish speakers, we have English speakers that cannot, I don't want to say cannot, would like somebody else to read with them. What does that mean when they say that $10 word? Because legal documents, you're a council person, legal documents are much differently read than your regular newspaper. So, we have been asked to help. And there has to be both English and Spanish. We have been Spanish and in a language that can be easily understood. And if someone doesn't understand, they should be able to ask for help. Absolutely. And we're getting brushed off. Yeah, I don't. Did you when you walked around and introduced yourself? Did they give you a full name or just their first name? Just give me the first name. Yeah. And yet, now this is your town. This is your town. And they're in your building. And, and, and they went, would you let someone in your house? Okay, honestly, okay, holiday dinner. Would you let someone in your house that you don't know their name? Of course not. Well, can you imagine someone cutting your lock with a bolt cutter? Because that happened yesterday. That's a bolt cutter cut the lock. It's me. Think about it. it. Just roll with it. Just for a minute, dude, because I'm serious. You're a councilman. You guys have, you guys have power. Let me, uh, hey, your your residents are extremely upset, no. and now you know why. This, you know why. This isn't in um. This isn't in Maralona. Where is the couple? The oops couple. The ones that the CDSA asked. They, they went to their house and killed their first. Oh yeah, yeah. There in was, Roma Land, they went to the wrong address and killed they, four. They went to an address with CHP. The lady says, "Can you please wait for my husband to get home?" Even she, they were making her sign paperwork. She has cataracts. She was asking them, "Please let me. Um, I don't have my glasses. I can't see." They were forcibly giving her the paperwork, and she and she called her husband. She was a nervous wreck. She called her husband. Her her husband was on his way. They proceeded to go in her backyard and start shooting her birds. And um, she asked um, CHP, "Can you please? Can you please go there back there with me?" And and also because they're shooting, they're, they're damaging my property. I want you to see. And they said no, no, we're we're not here for that. They they would not go back with her. They they proceeded. They killed four of her birds. They stopped. And they started talking, and then they told they informed. That's when her husband got there. They informed him. You know what? We have the wrong house. We're not in the right. This is not the right zone. Sorry. Sorry, you left. Your birds. Sorry, not gonna kill you. When we so asked, killed four of them and found out they're at the wrong address after they killed four. And this was after they basically barged in. Yes. A young lady with, with cataracts that is unable to see. Yes. And she asked them politely, can you yes. please wait for my husband? Yes. But they proceeded to. Yes. And, and ended up being in the wrong zone. See, we found yesterday, I asked them, can you get their names? Because we had, I, we had this incident. Uh, we had this incident happen. How do we know that they're at the right location? How do we know what it, they listen? Um, they say, oh, we don't need to ask them their names. They don't have to ask them. I'm going to stop for just a minute, guys.